Wow. This is also cod? This is also codfish, yeah. And we're probably looking at uh, 20,000 pounds or 10,000 kilogram in this one. It's huge. Oh, where are the codfish? Oh, what has gone wrong? Pius grew up in the small village of Portugal Cove, one of hundreds of similar villages along the Newfoundland coast. There was big families here. Yeah. Even this house here, uh, as my uncle, they had 16 children. Wow. So there was quite a few children yeah. growing up at, at, at the same time. And in the summertime, you spend your time on the wharf, very curious watching the fishermen come in and landing their catches. So, so you grew up, grew right up at the looking harbor. at the water, watching the, the fishermen come in and waiting for the day you'd be old enough to go out and fish with them. Fish yourself. Yeah. And how old were you when you went fishing for the first time? Thirteen year old when I first uh, started going out in the boat with father and hauling the cod traps. This is uh, Barbara. Hello. Glad to meet you, Barbara. Nice to meet you. Three months the fishing season used to last for Pius and his father. Only during the summer months, when the cod came too close to shore, would they set cod traps, as they had done for generations. You come in here anymore with your boat, the shove her under this. Then there was ropes there to haul up the foot. To haul up the bottom. To haul up the back. Lift it up. With the trap skiff, the traditional Newfoundland fishing boat, the cod traps would be emptied in the morning a small-scale fishing method that provided a fine source of income for thousands of people. It was really a, 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 good, a good living years ago, fishing. Well, there was nothing else, sure, and running. Only fishing. 40, 50 years ago. No. If you said like there was said, never going to be any more codfish here, people would laugh. Laugh. Say, no way, it's impossible. For centuries, cod fishing took place in Newfoundland. It seemed to be limitless. But in the late 60s, the big boys from Europe arrived. They used heavy equipment to hunt down cod. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And the Canadians themselves also built a trawler fleet. In 10 days on a trawler, yeah. we could catch more than we did all year from a trap fish and I mean we were one trawler there was hundreds of trawlers out there doing the same thing and continuously for 12 months of the year it was massive the amount of fish that was coming out of the water did it seem like a good thing to you back then at first I thought wow this is really great this is good money and uh, but uh, as the years went on we could see this you know there's so many boats there and there's hundreds of boats yeah. out there doing the same thing and then I started thinking, you know, how can the fish uh, sustain? Yeah. I mean, it's only obvious if, you, if you're taking so much out and if it can't replenish yeah. at the same rate, eventually you're going to keep taking out so much until there's nothing left. An unbelievable amount of fish was reeled in from the seas in no time at all, resulting in the collapse of fish stocks. Biologists issued warnings, but the government did nothing. None of them had the, had the guts to make that decision to say, let's cut half those plants away, let's take half the fishermen out of it. They said that would be the end of uh, the communities, yeah. the rural communities that fully depended on the, uh, on the fishery. But okay. failing to do that, yeah. they waited until everything was gone. Yeah. In 1992, here in Newfoundland, uh, the uh, cod stocks had been depleted to such a point that uh, they uh, announced a moratorium which completely closed the cod fishery here in the island. Put uh, close to 40,000 people out of work. It was probably the biggest mass layoff in Canadian history. First announced, they said they'd close the fishery for two years and, and uh, evaluate again and hopefully the stocks would rebuild enough to uh, sustain a small fishery. But uh, two years after, it was 
it was even less, I think, in the fishery. And here we are now, 18 years later, and it's uh, still no concrete proof of any, uh, any substantial growth in the, in the stock at all. When he thinks about tomorrow, he fares for his son. Oh, where are the codfish? Oh, what has gone wrong? Something that most people don't know is that uh, cods are still being killed by fishing gear. Uh, there is a shrimp fishery now in uh, Newfoundland, and uh, the shrimp uh, co-occur in the same place with a small cod, and the small cod are caught as bycatch. So people sometimes wonder why, why the, the cod don't establish themselves, and they blame the seals for this. They say all the seals. But uh, the fishery, in a sense, it continues, except that it is on small cod, which are discarded. What is needed is zero catch a long time so that it builds up and when it has built up then you can get again big catches but it will not build up again if you continue to catch it. Can you empty a sea? Well, yes, you can. It's the stone-cold reality in Newfoundland. It is no different elsewhere. From the 50s and 60s, fishing began to take place on a huge scale. Bottom trawlers with enormous nets besiege the oceans. Nets with steel chains scrape the ocean beds. An efficient way to catch vast amounts in a short period of time. The fact that this was destroying a valuable ecosystem escaped everyone's attention. I was taught when I was in the university that uh, this doesn't matter because the fish don't need the bottom. But actually it's not true. The, the young fish need to be in habitat that's structured, like reefs, because they, they minimize the energy expenditures uh, if they can hide or where, the, where the current is not strong. When trawling happens, it essentially laminates, it flattens up everything. It destroys the structures that have, the animals have built. And so the recruitment goes down. The, the production of young fish goes down. And so the stock goes down and cannot be reestablished because it, to build uh, this structure, it's like a forest, and under, uh, like a forest uh, underwater. It takes hundreds of years. And uh, a troll will eliminate this by one passage. Trawling is, is as if you were, you were fishing with, uh, uh, you were catching rabbits with a bulldozer in a garden. You know, the, there is a garden and you, you, you have to, to catch some animals or some plants and you, you bulldoze everything. Uh, what do you expect? Think of it like this. If you were to drag a net over the savannas in the hunt for buffalo, the bycatch would be equally immense. Even sustainable fishing does not always prove to be a good alternative. Fisheries with a sustainable label take the spawning seasons of fish into consideration, so they do not hunt fish all year round but even trawler fisheries can obtain sustainability certificates these days. If you certify a trawl fishery, which is, it's almost a contradiction in term. A trawl fishery modifies the habitat it is in. It cannot be sustainable. 